So, Rust is rising. And not like, oh neat, a new trendy language kind of rise. More like, watch out C++, there's a new sheriff in town kind of rise. If you've been even remotely near a GitHub trending page or a hacker news thread in the last few years, you've probably seen Rust's name popping up like an overly enthusiastic whack-a-mole. But why? Why are companies shifting, developers converting, and entire code bases being rewritten in something that sounds like it should come with tetanus? Oh, and before we start the video, I got some good news for you code heads. I made a Discord server where we can all hang out, share memes, and help each other. So hurry up, join using the link in the description or by scanning this QR code. All right, back to the video. Let's start from the top. Rust was born out of frustration, the kind of frustration that happens when your C++ code compiles but sig faults anyway. Mozilla engineers wanted a systems level language that gave you the power of C++ without the memory safety nightmare. So they built Rust and then released it into the wild to see who would bite. Turns out everyone did because Rust promised something incredible. No nulls. Who are you? You. No, not me, you. Yes, I am you. No seg faults and no garbage collector either. Just clean, memory safe code that runs like it's been personally optimized by a caffeinated wizard. And yes, at first glance, Rust looks like it's punishing you. The borrow checker? More like the borrow tyrant. <laughs> Got <he. laughs> You'll write a simple function and Rust will scream at you like you just violated the Geneva Convention of Memory Management. But then you realize that pain has a purpose. It's guarding you from shooting yourself in the foot with a double free, or worse, introducing bugs that only show up during your product demo. That pain is safety. That compile time screaming, that's Rust doing QA for you. Now let's talk adoption. Why won't you adopt me? Rust started in browser engine guts and command line tools, but now it's creeping into big boy territory. Linux kernel modules, Windows components, Amazon's infrastructure, and even parts of Android. Microsoft literally published a blog post titled, Why We're Experimenting with Rust. That's like your ex saying they're just grabbing coffee with someone hotter than you, and it's not just big tech. Startups are using Rust to build fast, safe web services. Game engines are being written in Rust, cryptographic libraries, databases. It's the kind of language you learn not because it's easy, but because it respects you enough to make you better. We must be better. Now, yes, it's not all sunshine and zero cost abstractions. The ecosystem still has some holes. The learning curve feels like climbing a cliff with no gear. And let's be honest, writing GUIs and Rust still feels like trying to paint a mural using a toothbrush, but the momentum, it's real. Rust has been voted the most loved language in Stack Overflow's developer survey for multiple years in a row. That's not just hype, that's Stockholm Syndrome with extra performance. So should you learn Rust? If you're building low-level systems, tools, or just want a language that makes you feel like a disciplined samurai instead of a cowboy with Malik, yes. Rust is the future of safe systems programming, and its influence is only going to grow. And speaking of growing, you know what else needs to grow? Your ability to turn that shiny new Rust side project into something people actually use. That's where today's sponsor comes in, Code Crafters. Their platform gives you access to unique projects that will help you stand out from the competition without the clown shoes and nose. Want to build an HTTP or DNS server from scratch? Check. Hell, you can even craft your own version of Git. All while others are still struggling to center that annoying div in their to-do app. You can start some projects free of charge, and if you use my link in the description, you can get yourself a whopping 40% off, so hurry up. Thank you for sitting through yet another tech rant, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to become a fellow codehead.